Hello, folks. Hi. Welcome back to Philanstagram. If you've been following us for a while, you may have noticed that we've been out of the pitch five months. So why did we take a sudden break from blogging? We had mentioned in past blogs that we were going to have another baby. I'm going to be a big sister! Yay! Just like when I was pregnant with Miriam, this turned out to be a very complicated and dangerous pregnancy. Although Bing had taken her hypertension medicine as early as week 5, her blood pressure eventually spiraled out of control. By December 2020, Bing was already feeling too stressed and we decided to stop vlogging and focus solely on the pregnancy. To control my blood pressure, I went on regular checkups with different doctors, three OBGYNs, a perinatologist, and a cardiologist. Test results were bad. I was filling dangerous amounts of protein due to preeclampsia. My blood pressure would be 150 over 100, and that would be on a good day. The cardiologist put me on bed rest. I avoided salt altogether. The good news was the frequent ultrasounds indicated an otherwise healthy baby girl who was beating all of the odds. We chose to name her Kateri. Though a bit on the small side, she was such a powerful kicker that we called her Karate Cat. She even began catching up on her development and putting on weight. She was very active and her heartbeat was getting stronger by the day. We prayed over her, sang to her as a family every night. Miriam loved getting high fives and flying kicks from her baby sister. We monitored Terry's heart rate twice a day with a home doctor. We started making arrangements for what we anticipated to be another premature baby. Blood tests revealed a thyroid deficiency that was causing my blood pressure to rise. So I went to an endocrinologist who put me on thyroid hormone therapy. That very day, during the appointment, my blood pressure rose to 170 over 110. But I wasn't feeling dizzy at all, so I didn't think it was an emergency. After all, when Miriam was born, my blood pressure was 210 over 100. So naturally, I thought that Kateri would be just fine. After all, I didn't want to get admitted into the hospital because I was scared to go to the ER during this pandemic. Aside from the fear of going to the ER, we were starting to relive the traumatization of the 29th week premium birth of Miriam. All of the old fears began manifesting as we approached the 29th week of Kateri. We were determined to get Kateri to at least the 30th to the 33rd week so we could have more of a fighting chance for her. And her development was increasing, which was a sign of great hope for us. However, later that evening, after Bing had taken the new hormone medicine, she had a terrible headache and started throwing up. She couldn't keep anything down all throughout the night until the next day. When we checked the fetal doctor that afternoon, we couldn't detect Kateri's heartbeat. We assumed the doctor was malfunctioning because it had happened a few times when the battery gets low. But by the night time, we were already in tears because we still couldn't get a doctor reading. Had Kateri already left us? The next day, I called my OB and she sent me in for a congenital anomaly scan. My third one for this pregnancy. Then the OB confirmed our worst fear. There was no heartbeat. Our poor little baby had died. Needless to say, our whole world crashed. The sorrow was unbearable. Bing kept blaming herself. At first, I couldn't even process the shock of her sudden death. We had spent several weeks witnessing our little fighter wrestling her way to health inside of Bing's womb. On a daily basis, we could tangibly see the improvement. And then it was all over. It was as if a lightning bolt struck our hearts and souls. In my mind, I kept wanting to go back to that fateful day at the endocrinologist's clinic. If 
I had only gone into the emergency room knowing my blood pressure was dangerously high. Could Kateri have been alive and with us today? Ding needed to have an emergency cesarean to take poor Kateri out of her. Prior to this, we had long debated on what Kateri's middle name would be, but the right name had always eluded us. Then, when we got to the hospital, all of a sudden it clicked. Angel. Kateri Angel. Looking down on us from her heavenly home. During the operation, the OB discovered the cause of Kateri's death. She had gotten her umbilical cord entangled around her neck twice. Despite all of my health complications, it was a freak accident that took our baby away. Kateri was too active for her own good. Then I heard the OB and the nurses exclaim, what a beautiful baby she was. Then the nurse swaddled Kateri in the towel and placed her beside my face. I never got to hold her because my arms were still strapped down onto the operating table. I memorized her every feature. Those tender pink lips, her graceful brows, that perfect nose, those tiny hands and feet, and the eyes that I never saw that would be forever closed. Every inch a perfect baby girl wants the whole life. And just like that, God forever. At the waiting room, I got to hold Kateri in my arms for the first and last time. She was so beautiful and looked exactly like her big sister, Mary. Even bigger, it seemed. She was 29 weeks old, the same gestational age as when Miriam was born. We had prepared for another preemie, but nothing could have prepared us for this. I felt lost, defeated, empty. How could we heal from this kind of grief? The hardest part was not being able to cry my heart out when I wanted to after the operation because every time I cried, it felt like my stitches were going to tear open. Then two days after the operation, I woke up to intense chest pains, but it wasn't preeclampsia. It was milk. Lots and lots of it. How ironic was it that I had lost my baby, but now I'm producing more milk than I ever had when Miriam was a baby. When we got home, things started collecting her breast milk for Miriam all by hand. A week later, a friend asked if she could donate breast milk to another newborn premature baby. Suddenly, from an untimely death came the unexpected gift of life. It was a big deal for Bing because when Miriam was a baby, she had received donor breast milk until she was seven months old. Bing was easier to pay it forward by donating her own breast milk to another priest, and it gave her a new sense of purpose. When friends heard what had happened, a lot of them reached out to us through prayers, messages, Price food deliveries, and even some financial support to help defray hospitalization costs. During our darkest hours, love came in the most unexpected ways. To this day, we grieve the loss of our beloved baby, Kateri. There are days when everything we see reminds us of her. Pictures of friends' babies on Facebook, online ads for baby essentials, Lazada still sending us vouchers for baby clothes. As days go by, the pain does not go away, but we believe that God is showing us how to carry our cross with love. Now we have a beautiful angel in heaven who we will see again one fine day when our earthly bodies are no more. Until that day, we will always treasure our short but sweet time together. 
every kick, every hiccup, every poke, every stretch from inside the womb shall be stored in our memories forever. The very angel rush got too soon. We, we love, love you. you. And we thank you for all the joy that you have given us. We will never forget you. Thank you for watching this dramatic comeback episode of Philanthropy. Join us next time as we begin to pick up the pieces and move on to a brand new chapter in our lives with a huge new project that we have started as we continue to heal from our loss of Kateri. As always, sending, sending love, love from, from the, the Philippines, Philippines, from this life and beyond. <laughs>